Well, here is what's coming up on your horizon. Well, the energy potential for shale gas is undeniable. It's among the fastest growing energy sources in the country and one of the more controversial. In just the past decade, shell gas has grown from just 1% of our natural gas supplies to over 30% and rising. And while it burns almost a third cleaner than coal does, it does have its own environmental critics. Today, we'll take a closer look at the compressed natural gas industry from new vehicles on the road, new jobs it's bringing into the economy. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's investment in career tech provides more than nationally recognized technology education and training. It produces solid financial returns for the state's economic future. Oklahoma Career Tech, elevating our economy. And the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. And now, from the Career Tech Studios in Stillwater, here's your host, Rob McClendon. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, filling up at the pump can get downright painful these days, especially if you drive a large vehicle. But a growing number of Oklahomans are keeping their large trucks and SUVs and only paying about a dollar a gallon, thanks to the low cost of compressed natural gas. From the giant flag overhead to the rows of vehicles below, the Frontier Auto Group in El Reno, Oklahoma, is not unlike auto dealers around the nation, except for what they sell. There's a real big need for CNG in Oklahoma, being Oklahoma is the number one CNG state in the nation. So Bob Balky bet big that more and more customers will choose CNG powered vehicles for a simple reason, the low cost of fuel. The one that I drove, we put about 243 miles on it and put 20 gallons worth of, of CNG fuel in it. So it does very good fuel economy, uh, very cheap transportation in that sense. Balky says some of his best customers of these big three-quarter ton trucks have been farmers and ranchers and folks in the energy industry looking to save a buck. A savings at the pump that could also save taxpayer dollars. The state of Oklahoma owns close to 11,000 vehicles that crisscross the state, and a growing number are now CNG vehicles. This year we ordered about 240 of those units. Michael Ming is Oklahoma's Secretary of Energy and a leading proponent of Governor Fallon's multi-state purchasing initiative designed to boost CNG consumption by converting fleet vehicles to the cheaper burning fuel. Driving gas. around downtown, he says he's so even converted his own truck. I have my gasoline tank. I have to fill up a little more often now with CNG because I have a smaller tank, but the price advantage is such that, I mean, you, just, you don't want to burn gasoline anymore if you don't have to because it's so affordable to burn CNG. Now, do you notice any difference in the way it drives? There's a slight power difference on CNG, just a, just a little bit less, but frankly, you don't even notice it. On the flip side, the good side of that, I actually get better miles per gallon on CNG. So I get, I was getting probably 16 miles per gallon on gasoline, I get maybe 18 miles per gallon on CNG. So not only is the fuel cheaper, the performance is better. So. Typically, what do you, what does it cost you to fill up? Dollars? So normally I put in about eight gallons. Um, so eight gallons at the station we'll fill up at today would be about eight dollars. It's about ninety nine cents a gallon. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal for the state either. No, it's a great deal. Yet only four states have the infrastructure to make CNG a practical reality: California, Utah, Oklahoma, and New York with Oklahoma having the most per capita with 100 CNG filling stations around the state. We have price competition at the pump. This is super important. And if you look, I have an app on the iPhone that tells you where all the stations are and what their prices are. In Oklahoma City, you'll pay between 79 cents and $1.29 per gallon equivalent for CNG. 
Other states are paying $1.50 to $2.50 per gallon equivalent. And what that means for Oklahoma with 10, say 10 million gallons of sales, two and a half dollars a gallon is $25 million of discretionary income that's going back into the economy now. Money that people didn't have to spend on gasoline, a big part of which goes out of the country. Well, according to Secretary Ming, the goal of getting CNG fueling stations every 100 miles is now down to every 50 miles, no matter the direction you drive. Now, they're also working on public-private partnerships to get more CNG stations in our rural areas. When we return, big wheels rolling on compressed natural gas. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon, featuring some of the good things that are happening in the great state of Oklahoma. Well, getting from here to there on CNG is about to get a bit easier if you're heading into Texas. Oklahoma City-based Love's Travel Stop says it's adding fast fill CNG fueling capability at eight stations located on the highways between Dallas, San Antonio, and Houston. Now, Love's opened its first fast fill facility, thought to be the first of its kind in the nation, in October at Interstate 40 in western Oklahoma City, and we were there. It takes a lot of fuel to keep the big wheels rolling on long haul trucks, and it's not cheap, which is why filling up this semi with compressed natural gas is such a big deal. This is great for the state of Oklahoma because this truly is a game changer moment for our state. Governor Mary Fallon, along with other state officials, gathered at this Love's Travel Stop Morning, to mark the opening of the company's first fast fuel station that will enable heavy duty trucks to fill her up on natural gas. This particular truck here that is being fueled with CNG, their fuel costs will be half of what it's going to be if you were to be putting in diesel into powering this vehicle. So that's a great savings for businesses. It's a great savings for our state when we utilize state CNG vehicles. And it truly is a, a game changer moment. It's starting right here in Oklahoma. But it's a game that could be a long one. The changeover to compressed natural gas has been slow. Yet CNG proponents like Tom Love say if America could affordably manufacture natural gas trucks and then build enough fueling stations to keep them on the road, the economy could shave billions of dollars a year off our imported fuel bill. It would seem to be a no-brainer, wouldn't it? It would be a lot more simple to build the refueling infrastructure for the heavy truck industry than it would be for cars. That's because a typical semi-trailer truck can guzzle 20,000 gallons of diesel annually, which is the equivalent fuel use of 40 cars. And by focusing on long haul trucks, it doesn't require building nearly as many new fueling stations as switching America's roughly 240 million cars and light trucks to something other than oil. For CNG, for compressed natural gas, uh, uh, you can't deliver it to the station in a truck like this. It's got to be, it's got to come in via natural gas pipeline. But the overall cost at the end of the day, it's begin, beginning to look like it's going to be about 50% cost savings, which is big, you know, which is huge. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, a fracking controversy. But first, new jobs for a new industry. Well, with more and more CNG vehicles hitting the roads, there's a growing demand for people to work on them. Our Andy Bart joins us now from a Tulsa school working to fill that demand. Rob, the alternative fuels training course here at Tulsa Technology Center is changing the way mechanics work on cars. And with the demand for vehicles running on alternative fuels at full speed, the auto repair job market is wide open. Working under the hood is a common career. But thanks to alternative fuels, things are changing. This, uh, the last couple years have been pretty exciting. Creighton Cooper is the alternative fuels instructor at Tulsa Technology Center and says his course reaches beyond being a mechanic. It's not just necessarily automotive. Uh, there, this is also a program for students with pre-engineering or, or aspirations for engineering. This is also a program for students who just want to get an auto service, maybe they want to work for a dealer uh, that may deal with some alternative fuels. And it's a diverse curriculum. 
And first of all, it offers a lot. Ben Carlton is an alternative fuel student and says he's getting into the right career. Right now, there's we've got all kinds of infrastructure for uh, natural gas, but we don't have a lot of people to maintain it. And so it's a really good career to get into. The program at Tulsa Tech offers unique opportunities. And for student Jerry Stiles, it's the perfect fit. This is a great opportunity right here. I mean, uh, you know, there's not too many places that offer what we're going through right now. Um, you know, and it's going to be a big field. I'm, I'm quite sure of it. You know, this, uh, I've learned a lot just in what I've done, and I, I'm pretty mechanically inclined to begin with. And Stiles has big aspirations. Hope to hit the ground running. Um, you know, I understand that the, the government's getting a lot of, uh, of these CNG vehicles and maybe get on as a fleet or something mechanic. And Cooper says the qualifications couldn't be simpler. Basically, I have a desire for automotive, but also something maybe a little bit different. The ability to think outside the box. Out of the box to out into the workplace, placing hardworking students in a lifelong career. Now, because this industry is in its early stages, it's expected to grow significantly in the next 10 years. Projections are that more than 300,000 jobs will be added nationwide. So, Andy, what can one of these young mechanics expect to make? Well, Rob, the pay is good, and the education really isn't expensive at all. Salaries range anywhere from $55,000 to $60,000 annually, and students here pay as little as $2,500 to get certified. Thank you so much, Andy. You're welcome, Rob. Well, like many other innovations, the policies surrounding alternative fuel vehicles are having to play catch up. Gas taxes pay for the majority of the repairs on our roads and bridges, and switching to more fuel efficient vehicles means less revenue coming in for those repairs. Now across the nation, compressed natural gas carries the same 18 cents per gallon equivalent federal sales tax as gasoline does. But here in Oklahoma, the state assesses an additional 17 cents per gallon on gasoline, but taxes CNG at just five cents a gallon. A difference that adds up and has policymakers throughout the country beginning to look at how to update our fuel taxes to cover not only CNG, but also electric vehicles that currently just make up 7% of the cars on the road, but are expected to continue to climb in numbers. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how our gas taxes have been going down over the last three decades, just head to our value added section of our website, where I do my best to explain how that could lead to a bumpy ride. There, you will also find Governor Mary Fallon taking a spin around town in a new CNG powered bus. Plus, we'll look at the innovative idea from two Oklahomans to turn our nation's postal stations into CNG fueling stations. And I also sit down with the gentleman credited with bringing the issues surrounding CNG into the national conversation, natural gas proponent and Oklahoma native, T. Boone Pickens. Just head to okhorizon.com where you can find all of those stories streaming under our value added section of our website. Want to share something you've seen here today? Well, all of our episodes are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Or you can subscribe to our weekly free podcast on iTunes. Well, the compressed natural gas industry would not be where it is today if it wasn't for a process called fracking. Estimates by the Department of Energy put the numbers of barrels of shale gas in the U.S. now recoverable by fracking at around $1.8 trillion. Now, to put that into perspective, Saudi Arabia is estimated to have roughly 2.6 trillion barrels of oil in its reserve, which is a lot. So, for the first time in memory, American energy independence is a real possibility. Here's our Keila Kellen. Oil rigs are a common sight across parts of Oklahoma as the oil and gas industry continues to fuel our state's economy. But what is commonplace here? is relatively new in other parts of the country. Hydraulic fracturing, often called fracking, has opened energy reserves all across the country, with sometimes adverse reactions. Whoa. OSU researcher Jessica Aldridge says when it comes to the science of hydraulic fracturing, it's all about perspective. Fracking was born here. 
Um, this, we invented it here 60 years ago. Um, we're an oil and gas state. We're used to it. Um, you can drive right down Stillwater on Main Street and see an oil rig. I, that was the first time in my life I'd ever seen one in town. But, uh, you know, places like New York State, um, north of New York City, they're not used to seeing oil rigs in their backyards. And I think that's a big difference. It's just we're used to it. According to Aldridge, even the way fracking is covered in the press varies by region. In Oklahoma, we tend to present it much more um, as an asset rather than a liability. We focus on the economic uh, impact it could have for our economy or an oil and gas state. Hydraulic fracturing is a method used to extract gases from shell rock deep beneath the Earth's surface. Explosives are used to fracture the rock that are then injected with high pressure fluids, pushing the natural gas to the surface a process that, while incredibly successful in producing new energy reserves, has been criticized for everything from polluting water supplies to causing minor earthquakes. The rest of the country seems to be more concerned about the environmental impacts that are coming out in recent studies and reports. They do acknowledge the, uh, the economic impact it does have. If we do frack the whole world, we're going to make a lot of money at it, but there are concerns. It's kind of drill first, ask questions later mentality which the head of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission says is often an unfair characterization. Well, the whole idea of using the hydrofracking and the horizontal drilling that, that has really revolutionized the industry in just the last few years and has allowed us to see this incredible domestic resource that we didn't really know was there, that has, again, helped the consumer because prices are much lower. In some cases, they're so low for producers, though, that they have to make their money off of the, the liquids in the gas, and that the, the gas itself is priced too low, so some of those wells are being shut in. And so it's, it's not only choppy economically, but there's also the debate going on uh, amongst the public as to the pros and cons of the fracking technique. A lot of people don't understand it, um, and, and that debate is, is certainly happening in parts of the country. And while environmental activists caution about the potential dangers of fracking, Aldridge says even its strongest critics can't escape the impact that fracking has on our lives. We are an oil economy. Um, even the best environmentalists cannot get away from using oil. It's our primary resource. I mean, everything we use in our country comes from oil somehow. However, we have the alternatives. We just keep delaying them in pursuit of fossil fuels. According to Department of Energy estimates, the oil and gas industry now employs more than 1.2 million people across the United States. Well, global energy demand is expected to increase by 35 percent over the next 25 years. And while newly recoverable sources of oil and gas will likely meet that demand, those in the energy industry worry they may not have enough qualified new workers to exploit the new energy reserves. Joining me now with more is our Elisa Hines. That's right, Rob. The demand for energy workers is up, driven by the shale oil and gas boom and the coming surge of retiring baby boomers. And it could force some companies to replace up to half their workers within the next 15 years. That means a need for everything from technicians and maintenance workers to engineers and even CEOs. Drilling for oil is big business in Oklahoma, and Continental Resources is one of the top 10 petroleum liquids producers in the nation. Continental's Ray Gonzalez says it's a great time to be in the oil business in Oklahoma. Everyone thinks the world's oil capital is, is in Houston, and, and it is. But beyond that, Oklahoma City is really thriving, largely because of the energy industry. And, and here in Oklahoma, the comp companies here are big, large companies that are transforming the, the world. So here in Oklahoma, you can make a huge impact. Jobs where the workers can easily earn a six-figure salary in an industry showing no signs of slowing down. We're going through an amazing energy re renaissance in this country. If you think about it, just uh, five years ago, we were importing 60% of our liquid needs into the U.S. Now we're only importing about 40%. And so how is that possible? It's through technology. So the oil industry, most people don't understand that. It's a very high technology industry. They even have rigs that move themselves from one drilling hole to another. So if you think about horizontal drilling, that's really what's enabled us to really build on this uh, energy renaissance. 
So think about someone taking a jump shot in basketball and hitting a shot from four miles away, okay? That's pretty impressive. Well, that's what we're doing in, in essence. So we're drilling down about two miles and then drilling across about two miles using a drill bit about the size of a basketball hoop. So you can see, technology-wise, it's really a fun industry, okay? So what does this all mean? It's creating jobs, okay? So we're in the U.S. right now, about 10% of all jobs created last year were in the oil industry. Jobs both on the drilling site and in the boardroom. And with a rapidly aging workforce, the energy industry is looking for workers. It's just a, a huge opportunity when you think about, I, th I think I read where there's about 82,000 employees in the energy industry in Oklahoma. And about half of those are between the ages of 50 and 60. So uh, that, what that creates is just a tremendous opportunity for someone young to come in, learn from these folks, because they'll be gone in the next 10 years. And that gives you opportunities to come in and really grow with the company and advance rather quickly if you're, uh, if you're competent to do that. So trying to find technical engineers, geoscientists, kind of uh, 15 to 20 years, they just don't exist. So our challenge is before our baby boomers retires, how do we get these college kids or these young folks into the industry and up to speed? And while these jobs can be highly technical and detailed, Ray says it's also important for workers to be team players. If you think about it, no one really can get their job done without someone else. So no one in this company can just sit there and get their job done. You got to interact with people. And so teamwork is an incredibly important skill set and, and, and really one of our values here to make sure that people work well together. Just how you approach people, how you talk to people, those are incredibly important. So that whole emotional intelligence, as they call it, not only do you have the uh, IQ, you have to have the EQ, emotional uh, qualities as well. Part of an industry that's future looks bright. If you think about it, if we can, in 20 years or 10 years from now, we can stop importing oil or importing oil. So we're not sending money away outside the country, oftentimes to countries that don't even like us, right? We can keep that money here, we can build, and that's gonna create jobs. So it helps on many fronts. Now, Continental Resources alone employed nearly 250 new employees last year and have already employed 41 new employees since the first of the year. So it's just proof that there are jobs available some that require a college degree, and some a technical certificate, but all paying well above the state average. And I understand they even have some up-and-coming stars. That's right, Rob. Two of their younger employees have made the Forbes 30 under 30 list. Pretty impressive. All right. Thank you so much, Elisa. You're welcome, Rob. It's not just the wind that can come sweeping down the plains. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we look at the impact Oklahoma's wild weather has on the economy. We've had historic amounts of disaster occur over the last decade. In Oklahoma, we've had the toughest 10 years from a catastrophe standpoint ever. And many of those events have been tornadoes. Weather and the economy on Oklahoma Show for the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Well, for the first time in my lifetime, it's possible that our country could become energy independent. American natural gas has the potential to not just heat our homes, but to also fuel our cars, all at less than a third the price of imported oil. But here is a dilemma. Which comes first, the cars that run on CNG or the gas stations that will carry it? CNG must be piped in rather than trucked, so every CNG pump along the side of the road needs significant infrastructure to get the fuel there. Now, here in the state, Oklahoma-based Loves and on Q stores are leading the way in adding CNG to their fuel mix. But this is an effort we can't go alone. For CNG fueling to reach critical mass, it's going to take a nationwide push. Now, for several years, Oklahoma native T. Boone Pickens did his best to try to persuade the federal government to get behind converting long-haul truckers over to the domestically produced cleaner burning fuel, but to no avail. Which is why Governor Fallon and 22 other governors should be commended for their work setting up a multi-state purchasing initiative to switch state vehicles in those states over to CNG. 
according to Oklahoma's Secretary of Energy. Just by reaching that critical mass, the states have seen the price premium typically associated with CNG vehicles cut in half. In fact, a Tulsa Honda dealer is now offering state employees the same discounted price on CNG Civics that they're giving the state. So while we still have a ways to go to get there, CNG just may be a good example of how government and private industry can work together to take some of the pain out of the pump. I'm Rob McClendon. Thanks for watching. See you back here next week. Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. Thank you for watching Oklahoma Horizon.